Hi, my name is Maciej Korzepa, and I'm from Technical University of Denmark. I will talk about how we can use simulation environments to guide the design of contextual personalization systems using Turing 8 domain as an example. First, let's consider why we need context aware personalized systems for Turing 8 users. Turing loss is usually represented by an audiogram, which describes loss of sensitivity to sounds of different frequencies. When fitting a hearing aid for a given user to compensate for the hearing loss, their audiogram is translated into frequency amplification curve and possibly some other settings responsible for directionality and noise reduction. These settings are usually fine-tuned for speech and noise scenario, which represents the most common hearing difficulty. However, the same setting often fails to provide benefit in many other situations where user intention is, uh, for example, ignoring surrounding sounds and focusing on work, enjoying subtle sounds of nature, attending a lively discussion at work, or exercising. So diversity of context is not really taken into account and typically only a single setting is offered to users. Moreover, the different needs uh, arise not only from different situations, but also from differences in cognition between users. Two users with identical audiograms can have vastly different perception of sounds due to some more complex cognitive factors that are not measured because of technical or practical limitations. So how can we personalize settings for different users and different contexts? Let's make a context-aware recommender system, but where to start? Let's consider typical recommender systems. They mainly focus on recommending discrete items such as videos or songs. They use learning signals such as watch time or whether item was bought or not. They're trained on huge static data sets, which are in fact very limited, and context-aware datasets are even more rare. And as the datasets are static, these uh, systems can't really learn dynamic user behaviors. How would the situation look like for context-aware hearing aid setting recommender system? There are absolutely no training datasets. Recommendation space is completely different. Standard learning signals are not applicable, and reaction to dynamic user behavior is very important in this domain. So we have to start from scratch. Normally, we would run a user study. First, we would design and implement the method. Then we would recruit some users to evaluate it, and we would hope that it works. However, as this is a new method in a new domain, probably it won't work, so we need to reiterate right after improving the method. This approach has a few serious issues. First of all, it's very time consuming. Designing a user study can take lots of time, and running it can take even longer. Secondly, it can be very costly. And finally, it's very limited in size, so we might not get even enough data out of it. So what are the alternatives? We propose that we should simulate a user's study, or even 1,000 of them. The main idea is to create a model of domain-specific environment, including elements such as users, context, preferences, and interaction interface between environment and agent recommender system. The environment should also include dynamic changes in these elements. We can model them by using available data to limit the discrepancy between simulation and real world. And when the data is not available or sufficient, we can use common sense assumptions about their characteristics. We should make the assumptions adjustable such that agents can be evaluated under a wide range of conditions. Our goal is to be able to cheaply and quickly evaluate different solutions under a wide range of conditions allowing agile iterative design. It is important to say that the goal is not to create a very detailed and accurate model of the real environment. But even if the agent works in the simulation environment, how can we be sure that it will work in the real world? Of course, we cannot be sure about this. However, if the agent fails in the simulation environment, it will almost certainly fail in the real world. Our goal is to answer questions such as, can the agent actually learn preferences of individual users um, in realistic time before users lose interest in the system, or whether it can exploit similarities in preferences between users uh, to speed up the learning process, whether it can respond to dynamic changes in user behavior or preferences, or how sensitive it is to incomplete information about relevant context or user characteristics which is very often the case due to technical limitations or privacy, privacy concerns. The more thoroughly we test the agent, the bigger the chance it will succeed in real world. 
I will give now a high-level overview of the simulation. We have an agent that has access to setting space from which it will choose settings for recommendation. We have a user sampler which generates or selects a user for a new iteration of the simulation and the context sampler corresponding to that user. From them, we obtain current user and context features that condition user preference model. The agent observes only the observed components of user and context features and based on them, it offers a setting recommendation to the user. The user evaluates the set recommendation, sending a noisy response back to the agent, which updates its knowledge about user preference. After interacting with the agent, user state might also undergo a change, for example, in engagement, uh, which will have an impact on future interactions. A simulation might be viewed as a generative model. We need to define these blocks in a probabilistic manner. In this work, we focus on generating plausible preferences using Gaussian processes that give us a high level of control over assumptions we want to put on these preferences. As not everyone might be familiar with Gaussian processes, I will now give a quick primer. Gaussian process is a non-parametric model allowing to impose certain structural characteristics on a given function using Gaussian priors. Mathematically, the values of function f are drawn from a normal distribution with covariance matrix k defined through kernel that measures correlation between function values as similarity between the corresponding inputs. Here, we can see the function samples for the most common RBF kernel. We can control the smoothness of these functions using lambda hyperparameter. The, the lower the lambda, the quicker the function will change. Depending on the choice of kernel, the supported functions might look completely different. Here we see, for example, Brownian motion kernel, and quadratic kernel. We can also do predictions using Gaussian processes. By observing some data points, we narrow down uh, the range of plausible functions and can obtain mean prediction and uncertainty around it. I will now talk about context and user models and how we can use them to generate meaningful preferences. We need to be able to generate context that is structurally similar to the one that we can observe in the real world. It might be helpful to consider which context types are actually relevant for a given application. For example, in hearing aids domain, we might consider acoustic environment at low level, such as frequency composition, or high level, such as restaurant or nature sounds. We can consider activity, location, or even time. We can create a generative model for context using existing data, if available, or create one from scratch using some simple assumptions. In general, we assume that the more similar two contexts are, the more correlated corresponding preferred settings. Moreover, we assume that context consists of observed and hidden components, and that the agent can access only the observed component. Finally, we want to be able to control complexity of preferences as a function of context, as well as its sensitivity to context, observed, and hidden components. We achieve this by context kernel, that is product of two RBF kernels operating on observed and hidden components. By plugging the context kernel into a Gaussian process, we can take samples of preferred setting. In these samples, we use only two context features, one observed and one found hidden. By modifying the value of lambdas, we can control the complexity of preference. The more complex the preferences are, the harder it will be for the agent to learn them. We can also modify only one lambda at a time to control the contribution coming from observed or hidden features. Here we can see how the preferences changes from being completely uh, defined by observed features to being completely defined by hidden features. The user model specifies user-dependent characteristics that together with context has an impact on preferences. For hearing aid users, it can be, for example, age, audiogram, or more complex hearing loss characteristics. Similarly to context, we assume that the more similar features are, the more correlated preferences will be. Um, user characteristics also consist of observed and hidden components, and we want to be able to control diversity of preferences across users as a function of user characteristics. We achieve this by defining user kernel that is uh, a weighted sum of uh, two RBF kernels, where 
lambda parameters control the diversity of preferences, and theta controls the balance between the contributions of observed and hidden components. In this example, we sampled preferences for eight users with covariances uh, defined as uh, in, in the figure. We can see that there are three clusters of users um, that uh, have no correlation between them, but uh, there are correlations uh, within each cluster to a varying degree. We take a single sample, which looks like this. We can see that the first three users are indeed very correlated, same as uh, next two users. And the last three users are also correlated, but with the eighth user being a bit less correlated uh, to seventh and sixth user, uh, as can be also seen in the correlation matrix. The sampled settings are the preferred settings only, and in simulation we want to be able to evaluate uh, the degree of user preference uh, towards any setting in any context. For that, we assume that the further a given setting is from the preferred setting in specific context, the lower degree of preference uh, the user has towards that setting. To achieve that, we use Gaussian process regression with uh, RBF-like kernels using sampled preferred settings as above as training data. As a result, we can assign some degree of preference to any setting uh, within the full space of settings uh, uh, as shown here for an example where the setting range is between 10 and minus 10. Finally, we want to be able to map uh, between users' latent preference F uh, in given contexts and settings to a noisy user response Y. Uh, in this example, we assume that user responds with a score in range from 0 to 1, where 0 and 1 correspond to maximally disliking and liking the recommended setting, and 0.5 indicates neutral preference. We sample user response from beta distribution with mean parameterized by user's latent preference F, and variance V indicating to what extent uh, uh, the user response is noisy. Here we show the uh, shape of the distribution for a few different values of uh, user's latent preference. Let's see a simple example of a simulation. We consider a single user and two scenarios for context, one with full observability with hidden context fixed and one with partial observability. The recommendation space is uh, one dimensional uh, with uh, between minus 10 and 10, and we limit the number of interactions uh, with between users and agent to 200. Uh, we test two agents, one oracle mean agent, which is the baseline predicting single setting that on average has the highest performance, and UCB agent, which is Bayesian optimization based agent using upper confidence bound to balance between exploration of new settings and exploitation of already tested settings that obtained high score from user. And we measure the performance by cumulative regret at interaction T, which is simply how far the agent is from optimal recommendation. In the full observability scenario, we can see that the UCB agent starts with lots of exploration, but very quickly finds the um, reasonable settings and overtakes uh, Oracle mean agent. In partial observability scenario, we can see that uh, due to insufficient uh, knowledge, UCB agent takes uh, more time to find uh, good settings, uh, but it still can improve over Oracle mean agent in a reasonable number of interactions. The presented simulation framework creates a sort of self-reinforcing loop of design. We start with designing agents that we then evaluate in, in our simulation environment. Based on the simulation results, we can improve the agents and evaluate them again, and we repeat this process until we're happy with the result. Then we deploy the agent in the real world, and based on the collected results, we can improve the simulation environment and revise underlying assumptions. This will allow us to create even better agents in a new revised environment that matches uh, the real world uh, closure. As future work, we consider modeling dynamic aspects such as user engagement, the user's cognitive load, and the effects they have on consistency of uh, responses or frequency of interactions with the agent. Uh, also, we consider modeling agents that can capture and act on patterns of similarities in preferences acro across users 
can adjust to dynamic characteristics of the environment, minimize the number of interactions needed to improve user satisfaction with recommendations, and can learn in a privacy-preserving manner. Thank you for your attention, and I would be happy to answer your questions.